Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this new demo session. Uh, what we are going to show today, I will uh, we will demo together with Ashar um, some new features that uh, has been introduced. And in this case, we talk about uh, one of the persona that can uh, basically rely on this kind of features. And first of all, we see an update on uh, JupyterLab uh, requirements and some of the introduction that we have made. And uh, then we will basically, uh, Ashar will show what we do once uh, we open and release. And what we talk uh, today is uh, regarding the overlays that have been introduced by Yashar the other day. Today we have a focus on the data science work. So let's imagine that uh, I have uh, two, three steps in a pipeline that I want to perform. So imagining download a data set, processing my data, training my model, and then uh, basically have uh, inference on this model, then as you see, there are different steps and each of these steps might have different uh, requirements. So using JupyterLab requirements, we introduce uh, some new features. As you know, the um, extension allow you to handle your dependencies using uh, uh, TOT or PPEM uh, resolution engines. And once uh, these dependencies are created, what we introduced is the overlay concept that is also used in the, in the, in the CI pipelines. And uh, this will allow basically the integration between the two domains. And so let me show you uh, one example. Um, so let's say that I am starting a new uh, notebook in uh, JupyterLab in this case, and I have my extension installed. Uh, initially, there is no uh, dependency at all. So what I do is just uh, requesting one package, for example, pandas. And then I will create uh, a kernel um, just for um, day. And then I will basically ask uh, for Todd to request to provide me with the uh, pip file, a pip file lock according to these uh, dependencies. And then the JupyterLab requirements will set your kernel for your notebook and this will give you basically your new environment uh, ready to use. And if we have a look at what happened also on the uh, root directory of my project in general, is that uh, some overlays uh, folder has been created. And as you see, there are the demo overlays, which is exactly the kernel that I selected. And uh, at the same time, there are the pip file and the pip file log that have been created uh, uh, accordingly. Why this is important is because uh, this is one of the inputs uh, required for the um, overlays build. And uh, to talk about that uh, before moving to our chart, I will show, introduce the case that we're going to uh, consider. So if we go to the project um, AI, AI DevSecOps tutorial, um, we have uh, three notebooks, the download data set, uh, training data set, and what we want to do is basically have these uh, images that can be used in a pipeline. And to do that, we want to use the overlays builds. So there are already some of the steps that have been uh, done that I show uh, a few seconds ago. So this is all uh, set, and uh, I move to Ashart. Thank you. Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes. I hope you can, you guys can see my screen. Yes. 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 Okay. So as you can see, a little bit. yes, yes. Uh, three clicks. Is this good? Yep. Yes. Okay. As Francesco explained, uh, we have pushed uh, like everything is updated in OLA builds, and a tag release would be made. Tag release will be made uh, so that based on this tag release, the CI pipelines will look into this OLA OLA directory, and based on that, they will try to build a container image out of these uh, the, uh, out of this uh, the details mentioned in the OLA repositories. For example, uh, let's take example of the inference application. We have defined that it should be Python 3.8 with certain packages to be installed. 
and uh, but for training purposes we don't need all the packages so we'll install a few of the packages which is uh, only required for training training uh, image so how would the ci pipeline know what configuration to use to build this so in the ai series ci yaml uh, you can define based on overlays what to be done uh, so we have defined that the we need to build download data set training data set inference data set so we don't need uh, so here we have defined only the build we just need the images so the elira can pick uh, these images so we have defined uh, only for the image to download data set and training we have just defined that it should be built and pushed to the this particular repository in Quay. but for inference uh, application we need to build it and also deliver the image stream tag to the manifest repository so that it can be deployed through argo cd so we are mentioning that it should be it should be updating the image stream tag here so that it updates the manifest repository and then argo cd deploys it uh, so uh, along with this so this is the top configuration file this takes precedence over aicui yaml file so here we haven't def defined right now the base image but if you define that then the base image defined and taught the uh, taught configuration file takes the precedence why should we uh, define it here uh, if you define it in here and if you go to the cli or you, you use the uh, s2i tool then uh, when you do a thamos advice thamos advice will look into the base image and also uh, based on the configuration of the base image and operating uh, and all the other def, uh, all the other requirements specified in this rep configuration file it will give you more optimized or uh, advices for that uh, so if you you can be defining here and then this base layer this base image will be taken in as a precedence and it will take over the build process uh, we uh, we can demo that so as soon as uh, Francesco opened a tab release it starts a pipeline uh, as as of now we can we can release it in our production pipeline. Uh, uh, Francesco, can, uh, have you pushed, are you creating it or can I create one? He created. Go ahead. Create. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we use, uh, we use uh, Kebishet as another tool which helps us with creating a release and updating our ch change logs. So create, Fr Francesco has opened a, a uh, issue so that Kebish and the other bot can take over and create a pull request with change logs and changes and then create a tag. Uh, this take, takes some time, like three to four, uh, four minutes. So for demoing, uh, I'll change to my fork to see you like show this in a faster way. So here is my fork. I have forked it and I'm, I will just create this particular tag. This is 0, 0 0.31. We already have it, so we will just trigger the pipelines so that we can see uh, what's happening. Uh, so here, what we can do is, uh, I'll just trigger the pipeline once. And it's it will start a pipeline in the, uh, in, in the cluster. And this type down pipeline will like as demoed earlier, it will create a OLA build kind of a pipeline. Uh, this this should takes like this should take also two to two to three minutes to finish up. Uh, this will start three pipelines based on the OLAs and then push them to require to to the defined query repositories. As this is a building, I can show you the result. Uh, we have like we had rebuilt it so we have some results so this uh, will update uh, update the manifest repository with this update uh, as you can see this is my fork so it will also change where it is for uh, built and pushed for so it is also changing this uh, like uh, the repository mentioned in Quay. so we mentioned that the repository should be Alira inference so it is updating those infra yeah updates uh, it will do the same as soon as the pipelines for uh, for the upstream uh, finishes but it will take some time 
uh, but it will also do the same thing. Let's see, this should have started. Uh, as you can see, there are three pipelines started and for overlay training, download, and inference. Uh, they are building at the building stage, so it should take so much time. Um, as we are installing only a few packages, uh, the pipeline should finish. And once it finishes, it goes to Quay and and it will update the image present in inference. So this image will contain the inference application. Uh, this image will contain the training application, which will be used by Elira. And this will be, be also updated uh, and used by Elira directly. Uh, that's about it. Uh, it's taking some time. Have questions? Yes. While you're taking what? some, uh, we can take some questions while this is mm -hmm. happening. Yes. So in my in my Elira notebook, I'm creating a pipeline, and you just uh, said and showed that if I create a tag in the Git repository, the whole build pipeline will kick in and create these container images. How is that yes. relationship between the Elira AI pipeline and these images that will be on Quay in in a few moments? Um, so, yeah. yeah, let's go. I I can show something if you want. One second. Um, can you see my screen? Hopefully. Hello. Can you now see my screen? Loading. Yes. A yeah. little bit larger. Uh, yes. So here we are on uh, uh, Operate First, and uh, we are using Elira on Open Data Hub. And what you can see here is uh, Elira UI. So Elira allows you to create these uh, AI pipelines. And if we talk about um, all these uh, steps that we mentioned, so the, the, um, the initial work of the data scientist was to create these notebooks, and each of them are optimized for their uh, specific uh, dependencies. So for each of them, there will be overlays, and uh, for each of them, there will be created these images. And why do we want this? Is because uh, for each of the step in Elira, you can basically select uh, the image you want to use and the resources that you want to use. And this is basically what we want to try to achieve. So if you see what is uh, inside um, Elira, um, in this version of Elira, there is not this UI related to the images, but uh, basically you can see that uh, you can add the new runtime images. For example, I added one for the um, S2I minimal notebook, but basically you can rerun similar steps and create these new images. While these new images will be available, you can go back to your Elira AI pipeline. And for example, for this step, you will select the image you want. For example, imagine it will be Elira AI DevSecOps tutorial, and that image will be linked to um, the, the data, sorry, um, data set uh, image. Then the second step, which is the training one, will be linked to the training one. So in this way, we will have all the steps that use the images that have been created and uh, present on Quay. And then uh, Kubeflow pipeline will uh, basically run these images for us and uh, store the model at the end of the pipeline. That's, uh, so if I'm if I'm fiddling around in my in my three different notebooks for for data downloading and uh, training and inference, um, if I if I'm testing stuff, I'm gonna do it in the local notebook and run through all the cells lo in 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 the Elira notebook, right? If I'm happy with functionality, I'm gonna commit it to Git and do a Git release so that the images for the AI pipeline are built. And then I'm gonna use them in Elira AI pipeline, right? Yes, and once you have this pipeline, basically you can reuse it. Imagine if you have some requirements for your project to rerun every day, then you can rerun this project uh, with this pipeline every day. Okay, And cool. um, yeah. 
That's it. Other questions? Otherwise, I will go back for short. So our pipelines have finished, uh, you can see, and it has updated our images, like four minutes ago, uh, there should be two more images, the inference, two minutes ago. So that is what it does. It completes the, completes the build process and pushes it, and then updates the, like if you have defined where to deliver the image, then it, updates that. Uh, this is already done, so it cannot push again. That is the reason why you will see that it is saying at push it failed because the commit already exists, so it cannot push again because the change, there is no change to be pushed. So that's why this one failed and rest of like the build process completed successfully it build and then it pushed to query. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, please do let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Nice. Um, so it looks like um, for every step in the Elira AI pipeline, we're going to have a notebook. Uh, therefore, we're going to have a kernel, um, which will contain and run a very separate um, software stack, right? Um, so for for the training, you we, we might use uh, GPU enabled TensorFlow version, whatever. And for the inference endpoint, we're gonna push to the stage or production environment. We have a CPU enabled TensorFlow in a very specific version because uh, the runtime environment information we used for the advice were different. Right? Training is looking at highest performance. Production is looking at most secure, for example. Right. That's very nice. It's, it's a good demo. It shows um, how to integrate all our knowledge, how to integrate all our services into the data science lifecycle. Thanks for that. Any other questions? Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs>